Hey everybody, joining us now is Scott Hurley. He's the digital executive producer for WLUK Fox 11 in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and also a longtime social media expert. Uh, Scott, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I should call you Andrew or Drew or Professor Smith, whatever you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Drew's just fine. The, All the, right. That'll All work right. just fine. And yep. Scott was on the forefront of producing as, as the digital became bigger and bigger and as social media became really a thing in local news production, Scott was on the cutting edge of being able to strategize and figure out just what it is that makes these things run and what it is that, uh, what it gives to a local news organization. First of all, Scott, let me just ask you, what kind of things are you focusing on now? Where are we today as you have Fox 11 as well as CW14, you're kind of a duopoly out there in Green Bay. What kind of things uh, are, take your time particularly in that social media. This book uh, sort of moves the goalposts, to use a, a sports analogy. But, you know, every few months they come up with a different algorithm, with a different strategy idea for uh, news organizations to publish. And it's up to us to keep on top of that, to make sure that we're maximizing that resource that we have um, and, and we're able to use that. You know, one of the things they came out with that our company, our ownership group, Sinclair Broadcast Group, Facebook Instant Articles mm. is what it's called. Basically what it is, is it's a uh, system where Facebook actually loads your news organization's articles onto its servers so they load faster on mobile for the, for the users out there. And, um, you know, again, if anyone wants to, to read more in depth about that, there's plenty of, uh, news that's been written about that in the last year or two. And that's something we use here at WLUK and across our, um, our parent co company, Sinclair Broadcast Group, uses that at uh, all of its uh, 60 or so news producing stations for Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, 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 that's kind of the big thing right now. And of course, in the last uh, year or so, Facebook Live and Periscope have really come onto the forefront and they've changed a whole lot as far as how we uh, produce news and how we get it out there. And, um, you know, it's, it's really something Thing where we, uh, I don't want to say have to constantly chase it, but we have to constantly keep ourselves aware of these new, uh, these new features and these new resources and how to best utilize them. There are so many different social media platforms, and I know that they've played around with Banjo, with, uh, with various other types of social media platforms. Facebook has, all, has been the big dog, particularly for the last four to five years in local news. Uh, why is that? Twitter, we've seen, has become a, quite, a, quite a robust social media network mm -hmm. for news as well. What is it about Facebook that really, as you say, moves the goalposts? Yeah. Well, I think the fact of Facebook is that everybody's on it. And it's something we've really seen a lot of adoption, especially with people that you wouldn't necessarily think of as being tech savvy or social media uh, heavy users. People um, you know, 50 and over, they love it. You know, a lot of grandparents love to keep in touch with the grandkids. Um, you know, I, I, I think a lot of people get a kick out of going back and reconnecting with people they knew in high school 20 or 30 or 40 or more years ago. And just the fact that everybody is on Facebook really gives us an opportunity to put our stuff out there and capture that audience. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really all about reaching people where they are. And, and Facebook seems to be where people are. And, you know, I think the other part of it is it's such a graphically intense environment. Uh, you have link previews, you have a lot of live video opportunities, you have photo opportunities, things like that. So Facebook really lends itself to getting your story out there and getting, getting the information out there. As far as Twitter, we see a lot less traffic coming in from Twitter, but that said, it is still a fairly significant amount for us. And the difference between Facebook and Twitter as far as how we use it is Twitter is more of a breaking news. It's more of an in the moment kind of a almost stream of consciousness feed um, for us as, as an organization, whereas Facebook is much more curated and much, you know, we, we give a lot more thought to um, trying to post once an hour as long as there's no breaking news and what's the best thing, what's going to get the most engagement, um, you know, what's the top news this hour, whereas Twitter is more like short updates, uh, police arrested this guy for a gas station armed robbery somewhere in our viewing area. Um, there was a fatal crash somewhere in our viewing area. Um, 
you know, the Packers, Julius Peppers has been uh, nominated for the Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award. I, I just posted that one about an hour or so ago on Twitter. Um, you know, just short little updates that maybe aren't necessarily the most pressing news for everybody at the moment, but they're, they're short updates. And the people who are on Twitter and who use it, which is a smaller amount than on Facebook, but um, it's, it's really that's how people use Twitter is to get that really in the moment breaking type news. Let's take a story then from when it breaks and your best practices as what your flow of social media, not just distribution, but also being able to have that, uh, that engagement and what kind of engagement are you looking for? And take me through that for two or three days and what you're looking to do as the digital executive producer out there at Fox 11. What are you, what are you hoping to see from everybody on staff? Sure. Well, I can you know, think of an example we had just last week where uh, a fifth grade girl actually took a vial of the metal mercury to school and she didn't know what it was, it turned out later on. Um, but of course, mercury has dangerous vapors. So the school, um, you know, that was a big deal for the school. They actually got the kids out, um, found some areas of the school where it hadn't, the, the mercury hadn't gotten to, and they ended up loading the kids and the staff all into the gym for um, about six or eight hours through the rest of the day. Um, we found out about it, first of all, uh, through a news release. Actually, I think we may have gotten a tip call, um, but there was shortly after a, a news release from the Green Bay Police, the, uh, the school district. I'm trying to keep this straight how this all <laughs> happened. Um, and actually, I think it was a tweet from the school district that said this elementary school um, is being evacuated because of a mercury scare. And that's all they said. They didn't have any more details on that. Um, we retweeted the school district's tweet at that point, um, you know, which is another thing you can do on Twitter is you can actually forward on and, and retweet official sources of information before you might have anything yourselves. So that was our first step was to retweet to get the information out there. Um, you know, this is obviously something parents are going to be concerned about. So we wanted to make sure that the parents um, got the latest information as we were getting it in. Once we got a crew out there and we were able to get a still photo back, um, uh, and, and in the meantime, while we were sending the crew out there, we were writing up the story for posting on our website. Um, and then we posted it and they were quickly able to get a still photo back, which is important in this day and age. We, we equip all of our field crews with smartphones so that they're able to go out and take a photo or a short video and send it back right from the field. Um, and of course, the internet today is so visual that you need a picture for just about every story. So we sent the crew out there, they got a picture back, we got it on, on our website, we did all the, um, the push alerts through our app, our smartphone app. We put it on Facebook, once we had the story and the picture, it, it, it wasn't a full story, but it was um, you know, just a, a brief synopsis of what was happening, what we knew at that point, which was that the school had been evacuated, we put it out on Facebook. Um, as information came in that the kids were actually let back in and they were allowed to be basically quarantined in the gym, um, we updated that on the Facebook post. So we actually went in and edited the Facebook post itself. Didn't change the link, of course, because you can't. Um, but we updated the Facebook post to say this is the latest information. We were tweeting throughout the day, much more so than we were updating on Facebook, so to speak. Um, but we were re, uh, uh, tweeting our information we got, retweeting the school district, uh, retweeting the police department once they got on, uh, on board and, and the fire department, uh, our crews on scene as they had pictures coming back as they were talking to parents later on in the day who were uh, a little frantic and a little freaked out throughout the day. Um, what ended up happening was uh, the kids were actually being uh, kept in the gym and special equipment had to be called in uh, from about two hours away in Madison and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, to actually come in to Green Bay and test this school. And they tested all the kids for this mercury, um, and they didn't let them go until then. So it was about 4.30 by the time uh, the parents finally got to pick up their kids at, in the afternoon. Um, you know, again, we were retweeting, and we were tweeting throughout the day. 